Good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. Uh, this is June 22nd, 2017. Uh, I'll call the roll. Uh, Joe Carroll is absent. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf is absent. Rob McSorley. I am here. Nick Rico is absent. Yeah, I'm Charles Anderson. We have a quorum and we will proceed. Also here is Wendy Frazier and David Hughes, our superintendent. Uh, next item is the approval of the minutes of May 25th, 2017. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Okay. Any corrections, uh, comments, or additions uh, to offer? All right, there being none, all in favor of the motion to approve? None opposed. Thank you. Item four is the superintendent's operations report. David. Okay. Uh, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of May was included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.58 million gallons per day. Our from quality was uh, well within our permitted limits. Uh, we averaged 93% biochemical oxygen demand removal and 97% total suspended solids removal uh, for effluent concentrations of 14 and 7 milligrams per liter, respectively. A copy of the um, uh, pump station flows for the month of May is included in your packet. We did have some peak flows at the Higgins Beach area as a result of rain. Um, Mr. Chairman, question relative to the pump station flows. Uh, David, I was looking at that. There is uh, one station that it seems like we didn't have some flows on for Fog Road for some of the time. Yes, we had uh, lost the um, transducer uh, that that transmit those flows data and uh, we have a secondary control system that runs the pump during that period of time so but we don't get the data until that is replaced okay looks like it started going out on the 12th and then yeah got replaced yep. other than that everything was good uh, continuing on um, with continuing education uh, Josh attended his last operator training course as uh, put on by the uh, JETSI um, uh, program. Uh, the last class was on June 15th, which I taught with along with uh, Glenn Be Bellaflor. Uh, we followed up with a tour of one of uh, uh, Portland Water District's plant over in Cape Elizabeth, and they put on a demonstration over there for us. Uh, the topic was nitrification and denitrification. I provide you with a draft update to the district's uh, fats, oils, and grease policy for your review. My thought was to have a workshop next month to discuss in more detail. Um, we just met with our insurance agent to go over our policy renewal. Our policy had a slight increase of $1,407 from $51,483 to $52,890. Even with a slight increase, we are within our budgeted monies for this item. One thing of note is the district's workers' compensation rate uh, basis experience modification factor is 0.7, which is the lowest available. The average is one. Uh, this saves the district approximately five to six thousand dollars annually on our workmen's compensation insurance alone. The motor failed on the aeration tank mixer number three. And um, uh, that has been removed and brought to Stealth Electric uh, for evaluation. The motor will be replaced under warranty by the manufacturer. Pump station 12 generator, the fuel transfer pump on, the, on uh, this generator, which is at the Libby Road pump station, failed and was replaced. Uh, Carl had to replace the failed pressure transducer at the Broad Turn Road pump station. Uh, the interim, in the interim, the backup float system ran at that pump station without any issues. Um, let's see, the heat pump that provides the air conditioning for the lab failed and was replaced with one that was provided during the upgrade but never used. <coughs> and then we had our annual inspection on May 26th. Matt Height from 
Uh, Maine DEP conducted his annual inspection of the treatment plant. He was very satisfied with his findings and had no corrective actions. I'll provide a copy of his report once I receive it. And that is all I have. Great. Uh, thank you. Any questions for the superintendent? Good. Um, I'd like to note that Nick Rico arrived at uh, 735. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. I did just yes, want to mention um, that I've been reading the fast oil and grease policy and think it's excellent. I think you did a really nice job with that. Okay. I look forward to the workshop. Great. Good. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Next item is correspondence. Um, 33 Hygus Parkway, Atlantic Resource Consultants requested an ability to serve letter for a proposed 35,000 square foot gym and fitness center. Attaches a copy of the district's ability to serve letter. As noted in the letter, this project will require an approval from the trustees. Uh, 8 Science Park Road, Teradyne Consultants requested an ability to serve letter for a proposed 33,000 square foot office building. As noted in the letter, this is an actual expansion of an existing 26,000 square foot building. The current building is approved for 1,034 gallons per, per day. The proposed flow is 1,320 gallons per day. It attaches uh, a copy of the district's ability to serve letter for that. As noted, uh, this letter, uh, this project will require to come before the trustees for approval. And finally, uh, on the correspondence is uh, the DEP non-compliance discharge incident report. On June 9th, we were notified of a potential fourth main break at 56 Mason Libby Road. Upon inspection, it did appear that this was likely true. We confirmed the break via stopping and starting the pump station pumps. With that, we could see the welling up and draining of water within a pavement crack. Um, as as that implies that the break was very, um, I'm going to say, superficial and that it, it, it wasn't a, uh, a, a complete, uh, all the, all, it was just a, a portion of the wastewater that is escaping the, uh, the fourth one. Uh, let's see, we immediately contacted uh, Riz Bear Brothers Incorporated who performed the ex excavation and repair. We also contacted Blue Brothers who provided a septage hall to haul for the pump station thus allowing us to take the station offline. Uh, the district's trustees, Matt Height, DEP, um, were all notified via email, and both Matt Height and the Scarborough Harbor Master uh, Shellfish Warden, uh, Ian Anderson, were also called, and met, uh, voice messages left. Riz Bear began excavating at about 9 a.m., exposed a break by 11. The cast iron force main had settled, which caused the crack in the pipe. A full circuit repair clamp was used to make the repair. The GPS location of the repair was recorded and will be added to the district's GIS system, along with some pictures of the repair. The repair was completed and the pump station was back online by noon, at which time backfilling began. Uh, as required, a DPE noncompliance discharge incident report was completed and sent to DEP, a copy of which is included in your packet. And as part of that report are some photos from the, from the actual break in the repair. And that is all I have on the correspondence. Any questions for the superintendent on correspondence? Uh, I, I think that was a fairly deep uh, force main uh, and uh, I think it was a good accomplishment to get that excavated, repaired, and, and done in a three-hour window. Yeah. I think that was I think that was really uh, really timely. We also had to coordinate with the school's buses because it was right in front of the bus barn. Oh, uh, <laughs> and so uh, we the, the uh, school arranged to park all the buses down at DEP uh, down at uh, Public Works and. Um, thus avoiding all that traffic in and around that break. I, well, I, do, I do have a question. Do you, do you generally um, contact Mike Shaw at Public Works if it's within the, the MS4 urbanized area? Does that, is that I don't. Um, I certainly can add him, easily add him to my list. I mean, I contact him just, typically I contact him for other reasons. I'm not yeah. thinking about the MS4 piece. Yeah, I think because this is something that as we are preparing to get a new MS4 permit, we are looking more about potential sanitary sewer overflow interference in storm systems, but also, you know, failures like this. So 
Yeah. I could um, easily Find provide him with a copy of this, notified, yeah. of this report and, and reach out to him and ask. Thank you. Okay, moving on then. Um, item six, old business. We have no old business pending. Item seven is new business, uh, and A is sludge hauling, and the superintendent has a uh, report to make on his uh, evaluations of the sludge handling program. So uh, last month, RMI had provided a proposal for sludge hauling and off-site agricultural application of the district sludge. Since, um, since this is a marked departure from past practices of composting, I thought it would be best to bring this forward to the trustees for, the, for their approval. I'm proposing up to a one-year pilot of this option. After a year's operation and working through the four seasons, we'd be better able to evaluate the true cost and ancillary benefits of this option for we need to work through the seasonal changes of our sludge characteristics. Also, one of the major cost savings is labor. With the recent retirement of Gary Howard, the plan is not to fill this position for the duration of the pilot and utilize the operator that was ded dedicated to composting to working within the plant. Uh, since we have yet to fill this position, this provides a good opportunity that will not impact staffing. If the pilot is successful, uh, the, this position will not be filled. Okay? Uh, so we'd be, be reducing staff down to 12. I have put together a cost estimate to compare the two options. Depending on the sludge characteristics, on-site composting costs the district between $70 to $96 per wet ton, as compared to off-site disposal, which is coming in right now at $75 per ton. As noted in the table, I utilize our cost for composting as reported in an annual audit. Uh, this figure does include materials, labor, and benefits. I recommend approval of a one-year pilot study to evaluate off-site sludge disposal. And following that is the table that shows the, the, uh, the cost analysis that I put together for the trustees. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Moved. Moved and seconded. Um, discussion? Questions? I, I was curious, Mr. Chairman, about the... Um, variation in the sludge density at wet tons per yard. There's a, a range of 1,650 down to 1,200 wet tons per yard. And depending upon that density, the price per ton is different for producing that compost. Correct. And I was just curious if you had an idea in that range, the high and the low, you know, what the distribution of the sludge density might be throughout the year, or is that what you're going to discover during this um, this one-year pilot period? Um, that's what we're going to discover during this one-year pilot program. The densities that I used, the 1650 was one that RMI uh, provided within their letter, that uh, within their original proposal. And the 1200... Um, uh, what what tons per yard was based on? Um, I'm going to call it anecdotal information from uh, Phil and Glenn on the number of yards that they produce and w and what a trailer dump would be able to carry. Because you know the, the intent here is one trailer dump carrying our, what we produce in yardage per, per year, and so that's that's where I got that window. What the actual number is is probably somewhere in between. Okay. I was just curious because I looked at your numbers and I like the numbers. You know, you're looking at a potential savings of possibly up to 12000 a year just in sludge costs alone if you add an operator or the, the salary of one operator to that, you're looking at anywhere from sixty to $70,000 saved per year. And it looks like it might be well worth it. These numbers do include labor. They do include yeah, labor. The, the, oh. the on-site composting includes uh, the labor piece of um, Phil, basically mm -hmm. half his time is dedicated to composting. Okay. I, what I did was, though, I took the operator you won't hire. Correct. Yeah. And added that to it. Yeah. That's what I did. So there is some other uh, additional cost savings as a result because we're, 
Our composting utilizes about half a man, and we wouldn't be placing one full position. That's so right. There's, there are additional savings that aren't shown here, and I didn't really know how to. Huh. I didn't want to stack the deck. I get that. I think it looks like it's <coughs> close to break even uh, under the high density scenario and the low density scenario. It's going to save us. Um, I think the thing <coughs> that I'm interested in, in addition to the finance, is uh, the environment at the plant might be significantly improved once again. I think it's pretty. I think we do a pretty good job for a wastewater treatment facility. But if we remove the sludge composting operation from the facility, that's another source of odor within the neighborhood that uh, that can be minimized and reduced even further, uh, making us making us a better neighbor uh, in the in the neighborhood. Um, obviously, when we're composting, we can't guarantee that there'll be no odors escaping the facility. And I'm sure from time to time, you know, there are, there are situations when that happens. Um, so I think it's worth I think it's worth testing out, uh, do the pilot study, see where we see where we end up. But I also would like to be sure during that pilot study that we monitor the odor situation at the plant. When the when the when the sludge is being hauled, uh, is that going to be hauled in a sealed con containerized uh, type of uh, hauling system, or will that be open? Uh, it's my understanding that it's sealed. Okay. Uh, I think that would again would be another helpful way to minimize odors on the route, whatever route the truck is following. Yep. Uh, that it would be sealed, but I think that's a detail we probably should try to pin down. Um, and uh, I think I'd like to compliment you for taking the initiative to follow through with this and give us a best estimate of how things will shake out. And I think a, I think a 12-month pilot period would be uh, well worth uh, pursuing. And then we receive a report from you after the 12 months and decide whether to make this a permanent adjustment or not. Also, uh, before, Aubrey, just before you jump in, um, uh, I had asked the superintendent about our uh, license to compost because that's uh, something that we um, currently have and maintain, and we don't have to give that up with this, with this change so that um, we'll retain the flexibility to return to on-site composting if it's advantageous for us to do that. So I think that's also an important feature to know. And now, now you had a question or comment. Yeah, I just, I was just more curious about staff feedback on this. Are staff supportive of doing this pilot test? Is there, is there a lot of discrepancy in staff opinion? Is it all over the place? No, they're extremely supportive of moving forward with this pilot. They're very happy about it. Okay. All set. I'm good. We're good. I just have one more comment. Far away. When you r remove the composting for this year and your odors go down and the number of calls for odors goes down with it, that's priceless. <laughs> I would agree. Priceless, maybe not priceless, but certainly... Uh, <coughs> certainly uh, I've lived it. It's priceless. I'm sure it's priceless for David. Uh, okay, great. So we have no other questions. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? None opposed. So sometime next summer, probably June or July next summer, we'll do a follow-up yep. report. So we'll schedule an item for an agenda in July 2018. Hate to think about that. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <coughs> And then we can, uh, and maybe you can make some periodic uh, observations back to us, give us a little bit of feedback during the course of the 12 month period, and let us know how things are going. Yeah, I will. Okay, moving on. We had, uh, we had a, an executive session scheduled under new business item B. Um, there is information 
um, that we still do not have regarding uh, the discussion on that potential lease of property. So I would like a motion to table item B. I want, do we want to table it indefinitely until we actually get a response, or do we want to? Do you want to roll it to the next meeting and see if something happens in between? Um, let's roll it to one more meeting okay. and then we'll table. So a motion to table to the next meeting. So, so moved. Items B and C would be appropriate. Second. Moved and seconded for B and C both? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Seconded by Rob. Uh, questions, comments? Moved. Actually, we don't discuss tabling motions. Um, Mr. Chairman? But is it in particular we're waiting back? Well, we had the, from them. yes response on the terms of the lease agreement. We had we had expressed some issues um, yeah. that our lawyers were trying to work together to resolve, and that still hasn't happened. Okay, resolution has not occurred yet. Uh, so, all in favor of tabling? Unanimous. Thank you. And. Item D under new business is the um, budget summary. Uh, the five-month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Anybody have any questions on the budget summary? We are tracking well on our year-to-date expenditures versus our projected budget. Um, actually, we're not quite as much under budget uh, as, as we usually, we usually run a little bit more under budget than what we actually are, but uh, I ha I'm not concerned. Uh, we are under budget for our year to date, and uh, so I think that that's a good thing. Staff is managing things well, and uh, there's no questions or comments or concerns other than that. Uh, all those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Next item is public comments. There are no members <coughs> of the public here this evening. Trustee comments. Aubrey. Yep. I wanted to thank the superintendent for informing the, the trustees about the, uh, the forced main break and again compliment you on how quickly that was repaired. I think that's exceptional that within probably two hours or so you had started excavating and within five hours it was repaired so a credit to I think the professionalism and experience of the staff and, and thank you very much for for you know contacting us with that and just a general safety note everybody who's out there it is obviously summertime right now and be careful when you're out on the roads running walking cycling I just want to comment on that. Um, <clears throat> Risbera Brothers deserves some of those kudos. We have a very good working relationship with them. And uh, in a situation like this, I reach out to them, and uh, it's not uncommon for them to beat me to the site. So um, they Great. need some of the credit. Excellent. Yeah. And Blue Brothers? And Blue Brothers, yeah. Great. Yeah. I would like to congratulate Charlie and the girls softball team for the state championship win. Yeah, thank you. Good job every year. You guys uh, do a good job with the girls. That's it. Nick. I'd like to echo my fellow trustees' comments. A big thank you to Risbera Brothers for their quick response. Um, congratulations to the girls softball team state championship win. And have a great summer. I would like to echo my esteemed colleagues' comments and uh, would like to congratulate all the seniors who recently graduated. Uh, be safe uh, going forward in the summertime and, and what you're going to be doing here. Uh, also, congratulations to the girls' softball team and one Miss Lily Bulk who uh, pitched one heck of a game, I believe. She did. And uh, congratulations to all our athletes. We did have a couple of state champions. Uh, I don't know if I get them all, but track, uh, softball, also individual efforts uh, on both team sports and individual sports. And not only that is uh, what we've seen in the past in Scarborough, um, the good sportsmanship um, in many, many instances. And uh, I'd like to see that continue. 
Um, to all our ratepayers and to all the audience out there, we have July 4th coming up. Enjoy America's birthday, be safe, and have a fun time. And thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, I just wanted to commend the staff again. Uh, continue to do a great job. Um, we had uh, a annual inspection by Maine DEP, which uh, translate into a very satisfactory outcome from the Maine DEP's inspector. Um, and uh, I think it's it's uh, admirable to get findings that have no corrective actions. Usually you get, usually these things happen and there's either record keeping adjustments or some kind of uh, issue that's, uh, that's noted that they would like to see some attention paid to. So I think that's really a great accomplishment. I think our, our new chief operator and the superintendent actually giving instruction at the JETSI training seminars is a continued feather in our cap. I think it's great to represent the district's professionalism and uh, expertise um, in the wastewater community. I think that's another really good uh, feather in the, in the uh, cap for our staff. And as we all know, and the trustees repeatedly uh, give uh, uh, credits and kudos to to the staff throughout the course of the year. You know, it's the staff that makes uh, the district operate and function as successfully it does, and it's a remarkably well performing organization. And I just uh, want to express my appreciation to the superintendent and to the staff uh, for keeping up the good work. It is the second day of summer. And 4th of July is rolling around. Uh, so enjoy the summer, but be safe. And, uh, and I, too, would like to congratulate uh, the Scarborough High School girls softball team, who I uh, have, am very proud to have been the assistant coach of for the past 26 years. Um, they're a remarkable group uh, of overachievers, um, extremely dedicated, and, um, and it's really a pleasure to see them developing skills that are going to translate into the rest of their adult lives. Um, and I'm sure that they're going to be successful in lots of different venues based on the dedication, the effort, and the commitment that I see them put forward every day. Uh, so I'm thrilled to, for them that they were so successful and they accomplished what was really uh, a goal that probably every high school team sets out for at the beginning of each season to win a state championship. Uh, but I can attest to the fact that our kids worked harder than anybody uh, in the state of Maine on a daily basis to get to that goal. And even then, sometimes it doesn't happen. But this year it did, and it was thrilling, and I'm just really pleased for them. So, and thank you all for your kind comments in that regard. Um, so that being said, uh, motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? None opposed. We are adjourned.